Hi everybody, I'm Bill Sanders and this is Watch Art Sci, the art and science of Watts Collection. Uh, today we're going to talk about uh, Bruce's biographical uh, collection. I call it biographical because it's sort of like uh, Bruce's collection is, when he sent it to me, he says, you know, here's, here's me, this is what I'm interested in. It's not like a bunch of <laughs> reference numbers or things like that, but it's an interesting collection because Bruce is interesting. So let's take a look at that. And uh, Bruce had it divided into uh, three groups, uh, vintage, what he called the beater, and then what he called his core collection. Now, in the vintage collection, there are two watches. One is uh, from World War II, uh, it's called an A11, it's the name of the watch by Elgin. And the the thing about it that that's interesting is that uh, Bruce is a history buff. I mean, I mean, a real military history buff. He was involved in uh, reenactments and so forth. So it's uh, it, it's you know, it's it's sort of a cool hobby, and uh, the interest in in watches from that period, I think, reflects this. Uh, the other uh, watch in the uh, vintage collection is a Hamilton, and it was the gold Hamilton that belonged to his dad, and uh, he inherited, it and it's uh, it's part of he he very very proud of that watch. I don't blame him. Um, all of my dad's watches went to my brother. <laughs> He's not a watch collector, but that's the way it goes. And I can understand wanting to have one of your dad's watches. And this is a, I mean, a really a classic Hamilton. All right. So those are the vintage watches. Now the next watch uh, is what he calls his beater watch. And it's a, a treasure and just for knocking around all the time, you can do everything from shovel the snow to, you know, to I uh, to go swimming in it, and it's and it's 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 just it's a cool watch. I mean, you know, for for what it is, I have my beater watch. I don't even consider part of the collection that I used to, but I ever since I I took the strap off it, it's it's, it's sort of on on hold right now until I put a new strap for it. But anyway, this is uh, the beater watch. Now. If, when we look at the core collection, uh, Bruce's core collection, there's some some really uh, some interesting there are interesting choices. I'll put it that way, and uh, I like them. Uh, first of all, this was one of the very first ones he had. And this is the Omega Speedmaster Professional Man on the Moon. It's got the uh, Hesselite uh, crystal, and there's a reference number for those of you who are. Omega, Man in the Moon, Speedmaster collectors, you know what it means. To me, it's just a number. <laughs> I know that uh, some of the early ones, I think it's 310 or something, ones that were actually built with the same Lamania based movement that was on the moon is, is, is something special for one of the older ones. Now, uh, Bruce is saying he grew up in the 60s and remembers when the first landing on the moon and so forth. And so this watch is it's more than just sort of a check mark. It's part of something that uh, he grew up with. Okay, uh, the next watch is a Rolex Oyster Perpetual. Uh, Perpe Oyster Perpetual, that's <laughs> I think the name of the case. It's a it's a, a Rolex Explorer. Now this is an Explorer that is different than the Explorer that I had have been looking at. Uh, the ones that I I was looking at because I was looking for a GMT was the Oyster uh, not Oyster but Explorer GMT. Uh, it looks something like this, but this is a nice looking watch. I mean, I, I would just, you know, here you've got a just a real nice clean as a whistle watch. Uh, it, you know, it's it's funny because uh, Bruce considers it his almost perfect watch. He traded it for five other watches. Now that's one way to <laughs> to clean up your collection. Is <laughs> it's, it's trade out ones you don't want. <laughs> I, I I know some people. Anyway, maybe you ought to think of the same thing. 
Anyway, um, this is, I agree with him. I like this watch. It's just, it's as clean as a whistle. It's the kind of watch I like. Maybe that's why I agree with Bruce. This is a cool looking watch, so I like it. Okay, uh, next uh, is another watch that I like an awfully lot, and that is the JLC Master Ultra Thin Small Seconds. The small seconds are nice and big. <laughs> All right, I've got my, um, oh, what's it called, Lang and Heim. It's got a pretty big small seconds, and boy, I tell you, if you're gonna have small seconds, I like big small seconds and that one goes all the way from the six o'clock uh, index all the way to almost to the middle of the watch. So that's a nice big small seconds on that. And I've always liked not only the uh, JL, not well, I like JLC. Uh, you can see the movement in the back there, caliber uh, 896S on uh, from Jacques Lacoutre. A lot of other watches, Patek Philippe, Vesteron Constantin, I think on a Gay, all of those at one time or another have used uh, one of the movements uh, from Jaja Lacoutre. Um, and of all of the uh, Zaza Lacoutres to pick for, a, I think, a great addition to any collection, uh, this is certainly one of them. Uh, a beautiful watch. Great, you know, for dress, uh, watch, uh, if your business may involve some kind of you know, more formal executive suite kind of thing. This is this one does very nicely, and I I like it a lot. All right. Um, finally, is another one. This is a new one. When I first saw this, I thought, man, that has got to be one of the smartest moves that Tudor had. And this was a their uh, Tudor Black Bay had been winning uh, Grand Prix awards left and right. After they won the first one, they put in a movement that they jointly developed with um, oh, Breitling. They had a, I forgot the name of the movement, but uh, they developed this really a nice movement. I like it when two watch companies get together and develop a movement that they both can use. I've seen it here uh, with uh, Tudor and uh, Breitling. I've seen it with the Richemont uh, movements that they're developing at uh, Val Fleurier. But I like this watch a lot. Uh, Tudor Black Bay, and this is my favorite one with the uh, black and uh, red bezel. It's sort of a blood red to it. And then they've got that nice red, um, I guess, GMT uh, stick, <laughs> GMT hand with a snowflake uh, uh, point on it cool cool watch this is these are these are nice watches and um i i happen to like them a lot and i think that uh, and they tell you about bruce he's not you know he's not a show off like i am <laughs> he's, he's a regular guy uh you know he, it's and the watches i think are very well chosen and it's a neat one too so i like i said i really like this uh watch collection and Anyway, I hope you I hope you like it too. But I'd like your opinions. You know, if someone so if Bruce asked me, what do you think would be a nice move next on this collection? I've got lots of ideas. I'd probably say, you know, you ought to look at uh, around. You know, again, not going way over the top financially, but finding some good what I'll call overlooked Parmigianis, or even uh, you want to spend a little more money on overlooked uh, H. Moser. And by overlooked, I mean these are watches that are sort of like people, they'll, not like F.P. Jorn where the bottom price on a used one is $20,000, but rather something under 10000 you can find some super good watches. Um, so those would be the kind of things I think that this would really, uh, really sort of poke it up into the next level. Your Jaja Lakuta brings it into high horology, I, I believe. And, um, but I mean, you've got these other bases covered. I mean, really well with the Rolex and that Tudor. I think that's, those are nice, strong horology watches. And um, you sort of go through the glass ceiling of, of high horology. 
Anyhow, Bruce, I want to thank Bruce for uh, sending me his, the pictures of his watches and a little story about each one, and I encourage others to do the same thing. In uh, June, we'll have a drawing for a free watch for those who have submitted a, um, a watch collection for review. Uh, this is the more recent ones. Uh, we went through a long time where I didn't really promote it at all. and So now I think that start to get the ball rolling again on collections, we're going to start uh, having a... Uh, every six months we'll have a drawing, and all of the watches that have been submitted before those uh at, during that period will you know pull out a pull one out of a hat and hey you want a free watch that you know they're not great watches but they're new and they're eh, they're sort of fun to have okay well listen uh love to hear your opinions about what um, what you think would be a nice addition to uh, bruce's collection and um as always this is an invitation to subscribe if you like and until next week, this is Bill Sanders for Watch Art Sci, the art and science of watch collection.